Well, we are here to talk about uh, this, our, we're hoping first annual symposium to evaluate and counter harmful industry impacts on health. So that's what we're gonna spend the afternoon talking about and solutions. So first I have no conflicts to disclose. And you might uh, know, I've been at UCSF for a little bit of time, but before UCSF, Actually, I graduated also from graduate school here, but in between that time, I worked for the US Environmental Protection Agency. So that's a place where I got to do some research on some of these chemicals like PM 2.5 air pollution. I also did work on evaluating risk assessments as well as regulatory activities related to many actually all of these chemicals, which you may be familiar with, acrolein, that's one of my, it's hard to pick my personal favorite, methyl mercury, methyl ethyl ketone, that'll have another reappearance, chloroprene, phthalates, dioxin, zincs, et cetera. And one thing that I noticed while I was at EPA, what was very obvious, it wasn't even hard to notice, was that every single one of these chemicals had its own personal lobbyist, or actually there wasn't one person, it was these groups that and I did, whoops, I didn't even name all of them, but you know, like American Petroleum Institute, Dow, Exponent, Exxon, Monsanto, CropLife, which really represents lots of different groups, Syngenta, Keymars, DuPont, the Halogenated Solvents Institute, I like to name personally because after they finished the perchloroethylene risk assessment and the White House had blessed it, they went and had a meeting with the head of ORD and then ORD said, gosh, we still have some science issues about this risk assessment. So, you know, they had a lot of influence on science. So this felt all the time like it was the same story over and over again. It was like chemical would come in, they'd have the science, and it'd be like, oh, the This was getting a little mind numbing. Also, it's very boring to do the same thing over and over again. So this paper, I was also an associate editor at Environmental Health Perspectives, and this was a very illuminating paper, which I was very excited to uh, be able to shepherd to its publication, which really distilled so many of the things that we're gonna be talking about today. First of all, it used the industry documents library, and this was published in around 2005. I got it in 2004. And I will say that this was primarily the industry documents library, which we'll be talking a lot about at the, during this, this afternoon, was mostly tobacco industry documents. And so you might be thinking, well, how does that relate to things at EPA? for example, that I work on, I working, was working on. And it turns out it related a lot because the tobacco, this is a series of three case studies about how they worked with uh, former EPA officials, former very high level EPA. become 
Now, when we were talking about this in maybe in 1990, you'd be like, oh, communicable diseases, those are so important, and certainly they are. But what we've seen in a shift up to, to 2020, night, this goes up to 19, uh, 2019, is that communicable diseases, which were the highest contributor to global burden of disease in 1990, are not the highest contributor anymore. It's now non-communicable diseases, so things like cancer, respiratory, cardiovascular, neurological, metabolic disorders account for 64% of the global burden of disease. So now, instead of thinking about the traditional risk factor, so in 1990, the vector of disease would be a, uh, something that is, a disease vector was a living organism and it carries and transmits an infectious pathogen from one living organism to another. And they tend to be blood sucking. So think of a mosquito. That's kind of the poster child. But now in 2024, we have non-communicable or chronic diseases. And so in this case, our disease vector is a corporate organism that is transmitting toxic environmental exposures. Think of Ronald McDonald and hamburgers, so, or ultra processed food. What? They're still blood suckers. <laughs> I'm gonna let you draw that analogy yourself. Um, so the increase in, in uh, these chronic diseases is really a manifestation of the global economic system that is prioritizing products and profits over health. And that is what we're gonna be talking about today. And so what we really have is an industrial epidemic. And so all these different factors, whether it's tobacco, chemicals, fossil fuel production, alcohol, pharmaceuticals, um, ultra processed and processed food, each of these are contributing to increased risks of numerous different types of chronic diseases. And I think this, okay, I was walking through my slides last night with my husband and he's like, 58% of all premature deaths are due to these corporate products. Like, that's more than 50. It's almost up to two-thirds. Probably if we keep going and we don't do something about it, it might be at two-thirds, but that is a lot. And that's just from tobacco, fossil fuel production, which is mostly due to air pollution, alcohol, process, and ultra-processed foods. So we really have an important opportunity to do something together to address this really really important disease risk factor that we have all been working on individually and part of our goal here is to work together on that. So this is a structure of um, ways that the mechanisms of power that corporations influence. We'll be touching on many of these today as we walk through the presentations. Um, we primarily have a lot of focus on knowledge generation, which is distortion and suppression of science, manufacturing doubt. But we'll also talk a little bit about the political environment in terms of revolving doors, like EPA's classic, um, direct participation in government agencies, PR companies, other types of companies that are set up to obfuscate or promote a corporate or products that are, are harmful to health, all leading to an increased rates of non-communicable disease and death. And just to put a little more focus on this, this is from work that Lisa Barrow and White did to categorize the different uh, types of themes that are used in cross-industry strategies. And this was an evaluation of different industries and how they manipulate science. And so there's gonna be a lot of discussion about this as we talk today as we're identifying both evaluating the strategies, but then looking at opportunities to counteract those strategies. And they include manipulation of research, funding and publishing research, suppressing unfavorable research, manufacturing doubt, changing, um, particularly focused on changing scientific standards and disseminating favorable research uh, to the industry. So today our goals are um, to illuminate how corporations influence science and regulatory and policy process and contribute to adverse health effects. So I just wanna give a little bit of background. We've, we've been working in this area for a number of years. You'll be hearing from the most excellent experts who've been working on this for 
uh, maybe even more years. And one of our goals is to bring us all together to talk about how we can cross collaborate because one of the things we're going to be illustrating is how the industry is cross collaborating. And we think that working together will be more effective in terms of counteracting these disease risk factors. So we're going to showcase this through the industry documents library, which UCSF is. It's really a treasure at UCSF that the library has so many of these internal industry documents. We'll be hearing later about the many different industry documents collections. It's more than tobacco. It's um, uh, food, sugar, fossil fuels, chemicals, um, and also recently the opioid and plus more are coming online. And then we're going to talk about the partnership that we've created over the last year with people who are working in this area and have decided that it's really important for us to join forces to do a more strategic focus on uh, approaches that we can take to counteract this and then identify these opportunities and support for the initiative. So our vision is a just and healthy society where public health policies are built on unbiased science, free of industry influence that prior to prioritizes equitable health creation. 